Good evening. Welcome to a special Thanksgiving edition of Celebrations Neighborhood. I'm Pastor Maggie Burnt Dreyer. Thanks for stopping by. Paul writes in his letter to the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And again, in his first letter to the Thessalonians, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you've been with us for Wednesday Night Live this month, you know this last verse as this month's memory verse. These are great verses, but I must confess, <laughs> I am not very good at taking these them seriously. I mean, they sound lovely, but it seems a bit unrealistic and almost like toxic positivity, right? the, the practice of forcing a positive attitude at all times, so much so that it ignores and dismisses the reality of the hard emotions, uh, pain and grief and suffering. Like how can we simply prescribe thankfulness when the premise of the original Thanksgiving is genocide of an entire people, the original sin of our country that we don't like to talk about? Or how can we tell people in deep grief or suffering years of injustice to simply be thankful as if that's this magic cure-all to solve all their problems? And how does forced thankfulness help us when we often spend the holidays navigating strained relationships, difficult conversations, and painful family dynamics? Theologian Diana Butler Bass addresses this very thing in her book, Grateful, The Transformative Power of Giving Thanks. From it, I realized I had misplaced expectations about gratitude. And she writes, Gratitude is not a psychological or political panacea that denies pain or overlooks injustice because being grateful does not fix anything. Pain, suffering, and injustice, these things are all real. They do not go away. Gratitude, however, invalidates the false narrative that these things are the sum total of human existence, that despair is the last word. Gratitude gives a new story. It opens our eyes to see that every life is, in unique and dignified ways, graced. The lives of the poor, the cast-offs, the sick, the jailed, the exiles, the abused, the forgotten, as well as those in more comfortable physical circumstances. Your life, my life, we all share in the ultimate gift, life itself, together, right now. So this shift from thinking of gratitude as a forced attitude adjustment designed to ignore or dismiss the pain, to seeing gratitude as a, as a new story, as a companion story to the pain, a story of hope and joy, even in the midst of the murkiest gloom. That has been eye-opening for me. Gratitude is not about escaping pain. It's about being grounded in the grace of God, even in the midst of it. And then, of course, I realize this is not a new discovery, but a remembering of the ancient wisdom held in the Psalms. Many Psalms start out in a place of despair and end in a place of gratitude and faith in God. For example, Psalm 4 begins, Answer me when I call, O God, how long shall my honor suffer shame? And ends with, you have put gladness in my heart. I will lie down, I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me lie down in safety. And that's just one example of the many psalms that start off in heartache, despair, and lament, and, up in a and end up in a place of security, faith, and hope. This has been a hard year. And if you're having trouble forcing thankfulness, that's okay. You don't have to. God is at work. God will get you there. Just like the psalmist, it's okay to start wherever you are. Maybe you'll find yourself along with them proclaiming to God, you have put gladness in my heart. I don't know what your Thanksgiving table looks like this year. Likely much different than it traditionally does. But full or empty, 
joyful or tense, lively or quiet, when we gather around the table with God, who fills our hearts with gladness. And no matter what the circumstances, we give thanks to God, not because it will fix anything or change your reality, but as a way to remember the hope we have in Christ Jesus. The hope that though the reality of the pain and brokenness are very real, so is the presence, the grace, the work of God, and it reaches to all our tables. This Thanksgiving, let's acknowledge our pain and what's been hard this year alongside God's call to gratitude. They don't cancel one another out, but together create a more abundant life and keep hope alive. Maybe, I wonder then, maybe that's a, a conversation we should have around our, our Thanksgiving tables. Where do you find hope? Or what gives you hope right now? I bet you to give it a try and see what hope we can help one another find. Blessings for you and all who gather at your table this Thanksgiving. May God move you to a place of comfort and peace and fill your hearts with hope. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have blessed us with so many good gifts, not because of who we are or what we do, but because that is who you are. You are our creator, God, who loves. Make us ever grateful to be recipients of your steadfast love and move us to share your love with everyone you put in our lives. Though we may have seen our fortunes fall this year, we praise you for securing our treasure in Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom not even death can destroy. Though we miss those with whom we cannot gather this year, we give you thanks for the times we have shared together and will again one day in this life or the next. Give us glad hearts, O oh Lord, in all circumstances. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving to you all.